Good morning, beautiful souls. It's very sunny here. I'm currently sitting in a hotel room in Fernie, British Columbia. I've been on a motorcycle trip for the last couple days for my 40th birthday. It's been just amazing with my best friend, just riding around, having fun. And I wanted to come on and say hi and talk a little, about, little bit about emotional mastery. I created a little flow chart this morning and posted it in my group and I posted it to a bunch of pages too and on my Instagram and just, you know, when we're emotionally triggered, when we feel that heaviness in our body when something outside of us happens, that trigger is up to us to dig into and release. Because when somebody else does something, 90% of the time it's not out of malice, it's not out of them trying to hurt us. Yes, there are times where people are trying to really pick at us, but a lot of the time when we're triggered, it's not a life or death situation and our body tries to tell us it is that's when we go back into the limbic brain we sh we shift from the prefrontal cortex which is our reasoning brain our our human brain into our animal brain which is the brain back here which is the survival brain and what'll happen is we'll have those triggers happen and just like that you feel like you're in a panic your um your system kicks in to show to teach you it's like fight or flight it's like you have to save yourself and the key to emotional mastery is digging into those digging into those triggers and understanding that it's not life or death and you can clear this out of your system you just have to you have to accept it and you have to learn from it you you have to feel into these triggers you need to release them because 99% of triggers are there because you've experienced something previous in your life that has caused, gotten caught in your nervous system and that's convincing you that you're in danger. And you're not in danger. You're fully supported all the time. You're fully taken care of all the time. You just have to realize that. The more we fear, the more we're scared, the more we will invite that energy in of, of things that we need to be scared of. So as you begin to surrender and let go of fear, there will be less to fear. It's a weird conundrum really because when we've been raised to fear everything around us or be afraid of life, we forget those things. So feel into your emotional triggers. Do something that scares you once a day or once a week or once a month, something. Step out of your comfort zone because that'll teach your body and your mind that it's okay to do things that may have scared us before, that may have been fearful to us. Do something a little more wild. Do something that brings you the most joy. Turn fear into power and into joy. Surrender to the process and allow these things to release. I don't have my cards here. I didn't pack cards, so I can't pull a card for today. But I just really wanted to come on and bring this message in. We've just come out of the new moon, or we're still in the new moon energies, the new moon in Cancer. I'm a Cancer, so I feel this pull very strongly. Connecting with our emotions is key. We're heading in. We're heading out of the 7-7 energy into the 8-8 energy in August and connecting into our emotions, connecting into our inner selves. When we do fear, ask yourself, why am I fearing this? What is there to be afraid of? Sometimes there are actually things to be afraid of. Like if you're being chased by a bear or there's violence happening to you or around you. But if it's just day-to-day -day life where if somebody speaks to you in a way that triggers you, um, if somebody cuts you off in traffic, you know, those things. Why are you fearing? Why are you getting worked up? Why are you getting angry? Are you living in that limbic brain, that anger brain? Or are you coming back into your heart center and loving? As you release that trauma from your nervous system, you can come back into a heart-centered space of love and forgiveness for self more than anything when we let go of the shame and guilt that we've hung on that we've been hanging on to our whole lives we can really turn in to loving ourselves and self-love is the path i know it may sound a little woo woo to some people but it is true when you truly accept who you are step into your self-love step into loving others around you knowing that we've all come from the same source that doesn't mean that everything and everyone is good for you and your energy. But if we come from a place of utmost compassion and reverence and understand that we are all one and have those boundaries to balance what's good and what's not for us, that's when you come into mastery because you understand that other people's actions are their actions and they have to live their own karma and we can't control their karma. We can't control them. The only thing we can work on is us and the way we react to our emotional triggers. That is the key to self-mastery 
mastering your triggers. I still get triggered and I have to ask myself what, what in me, what childhood wound, what adult wound is being triggered here? What emotion am I still holding on to in my system that's reacting to the circumstance that's going on outside of me? And as you realize this and know that there is no end game, there's no end point for anything. There's no space of ascension or full awareness. We just continue to grow and expand and accept that day by day for what it is. That is the mastery right there. Accept it. Love yourself in this now moment. Know that you are whole and complete right now. Right now. Give yourself a big hug. Give yourself a little more love today. Give yourself a little more compassion today. And then pass that out to other people around you. Anyway, I love you. I got to go get ready to get back on my motorcycle. I'm heading back home today the long way. It's been awesome. Riding through the mountains on a bike is the most healing thing that I've ever done. I'm like so grateful for this experience. I've gotten to dip my feet in hot spring water and cold creeks along the way. I've collected rocks because that's what I do. And the mountains, like I am so grateful for where I live. I'm, I live in Calgary, Alberta, Canada, for any of those you who know where that is. We are on the doorstep to the Rockies. And, you know, I live in a city that's not in the mountains, but you drive a half hour, an hour west, and we're right in the Rocky Mountains. The most magic, one of the most magical places on earth. So I'm so grateful for it. Anyway, I love you all so much. Have a beautiful Saturday and thank you for the birthday wishes. Those of you who did, um, 40 is a great year. I'm very happy to still be here to spread some truth and wisdom. And I'm very grateful for every single one of you. Have a beautiful day. Bye.